Thank you very much, Stuart. Thank you very much, Sharon. Appreciate that. Well, we're going to come continue in the book of Ephesians. It's good to go through a book of the Bible because that way it's laid out for us. Last week we spoke on chapter 2, the last part of chapter 2. And we realised that the book of Ephesians was written to people a long time ago. And today as well, we're going to cover a passage of scripture that uh, has a message for people that are more... Well, the message is obvious for everybody, but the context was at a time when not everything was known. I want to read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the ad ad administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations as it is now been revealed by the Spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and share us together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace, given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this ministry, mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now through the church the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authority in heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, through faith in him, we, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you therefore not to be discouraged because my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Father, I thank you for your word. And Lord, this morning, Lord God, as we look at aspects of that passage of scripture, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would bring us to understanding and set us free from anything that is holding us back. We want to honour you and acknowledge you right now in Jesus' name. I want to look at two things today. I want to look at the person, the writer of this passage of scripture and uh, the grace that's upon his life and also on the message that has been given here. Paul is the writer of this passage of scripture. Paul is an apostle. An apostle is someone who is sent out to proclaim the gospel and to bring truth to people. He was given a grace. The Bible says, by the grace given to me, it is a grace that's upon his life to be able to minister the life of Jesus Christ to others. It's a grace. He said that he is the least, he is not worthy to be sharing. We know from his history that he was someone who persecuted Christians and probably had some put to death. He was against the gospel. But now he is 100% for the gospel and he, by this time he's been ministering for many years. He is now in a prison in Rome, probably under house arrest. He calls himself a prisoner of Christ Jesus, not a prisoner of the empire of Rome. 
He's there. In fact, he counts it a joy to be suffering for Christ. But he is there representing Jesus Christ. He is a prisoner of Jesus Christ, not a prisoner as a prisoner in the bound. And he's there for the sake of the Gentiles. He's there on behalf of the people. Paul was a, a minister to the Gentiles. The other apostles were mainly ministers to the Jews. And from last week, we understand that uh, uh, the Jews and the Gentiles were not always in good relationship with together. In fact, they hated each other. In fact, there were only certain things that the Jews could do. They were actually despised by the, by the, the Gentiles and the Jews despised one another. Okay? And, but this man is operating under grace. He says, by the grace given to me, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he has received revelation, knowledge, which he is passing on to others. We know that Paul in his ministry was able to do amazing things. He set a lot of people free. He prophesied. He was a prophet and an apostle and a teacher. So he was, there were was certain graces on him to function. These uh, graces for people to function is still today. Hopefully I'm functioning through the grace of God, not through my capacity. And therefore he says, when I am weak, that's when I am strong. So therefore, Paul was not operating out of his own capacity. That's when I want you to understand this. He wasn't moving in his own abilities and his own eloquent speaking. He was moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Holy Spirit is here today. The Holy Spirit lives in, or we live, the Holy Spirit lives in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, but he brings some truths here that we need to get a grasp. We've been going through the book of Ephesians and we find in chapter 1 all the benefits that we have as Christians. Who we are in Christ. And the main theme of the book is in Christ. We who are in Christ. Okay, that is the overall message that he's sharing. In Christ. In Christ we are who we are, and in Christ we do what we do. Okay? So this is really important for us to understand. Okay? Not in our own strength, not in our own capacity. We will not get to heaven in our own strength or our own capacity. We won't get there. Okay? It's very clear. But there are great privileges to being a Christian. Paul here is talking and saying that the revelation knowledge that he has received from, the whole, from God through the Holy Spirit was for the people. And he said this was not available in the generation, past generations. This understanding was not there for the people in the Old Testament. There, there are Passages of scripture in the Old Testament that prophesy about Jesus and about uh, the fact that the world will be saved through Christ. Not in th those words. And these people were, were naive to the truth, especially before, before they became Christians. Okay, Because the belief was that God's people were the Israelites, were the Jews. And the benefits of God's blessing was for the Jews, not for the whole world. You see? And so Paul has had a revelation that this is not the case. We have some... I'll read a couple of passages, a couple of scriptures. In Psalm 67 and verse 2, it says, So that your ways may be known on the earth your salvation among all nations. Okay, that's written in the Old Testament. And uh, a promise to Abraham at the time when he was offering up Isaac, his son, to the Lord. He was about to sacrifice him. He was about to 
take a knife and to kill him as a sacrifice. And remember that, and therefore God provided a ram, provided another sacrifice. But in uh, Genesis 22 and verse 18, it says, And through your offspring, all nations on the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. It didn't say a nation. It says all nations. So therefore, originally, the understanding that salvation was for everybody was not known. Okay? It was known to some people, and Paul was preaching to the Gentiles, telling them that this gospel that is preached, that I'm preaching, is for everyone. And we know that in the benefit of hindsight, because we've heard messages to know that, that we are heirs together with Christ. But... His message that he's saying, the mystery, and he mentioned it four times in his passage of scripture, there's a mystery that's been given to him, but the, the, the outworking of the mystery. In some versions of the Bible, it calls it a secret. Okay? But it's not a secret as we understand a secret. So we believe a secret is when we don't tell anybody about something. But this revelation or this mystery or this secret, he was, he was told to proclaim to everybody. Do you know that secret? Do you know that mystery? For yourself personally, as an individual, with the assurance that you are a son or a daughter of God. Do you know that? You see? Not everybody knows that. Jesus said, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of the Father. We need to know this truth. Personally, and understand it and make it ours for the assurance. I want to look at the message. So the, the person who gave it was Paul. Incidentally, grace, there is a certain grace and a calling upon all people's lives, upon your life. Did you know that? It depends whether you are functioning in that capacity because the message that we have here is very profound. Okay? We've heard it. Do we, have we partaken of it and do we fully understand it? Because there are two things that come out in this very clearly. There is a grace on people's lives. The Bible says we've all been called according to God's purpose. Paul, in, in, in the next chapter, talks about calling, that we're all called. You're all, we're all called. And God gives us a grace to function, which means we don't function in our own capacity, we function in God's capacity. We have... Uh, at our disposal, for a matter of a word, to the Holy Spirit. We can be led by the Holy Spirit and God wants us to function in the Holy Spirit because we can't do anything good as far as the kingdom of God is concerned without the Holy Spirit. Paul speaks regularly through the scriptures that he is incapable of doing what he's doing, except for the Holy Spirit. He says that when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. So Paul is talking to the Ephesian Christians. He says, God has revealed to me a great mystery. Namely, that both Jews and Gentiles are united as one in the body of Christ. And he has called me, that's Paul, to proclaim that message. See, that was, that was unheard of before. Even in the time of Jesus Christ, Jesus preached to the Jews. He didn't preach to the Gentiles. His ministry... So therefore we have from Genesis to Malachi in the Old Testament, which is the whole Old Testament, nowhere in there is speaking about this 
And Jesus, even though he made promises, he is speaking to Jewish people. He's in Israel. Jesus never left Israel apart from a short time as a baby when he went to Egypt with his parents. His whole ministry was to Jewish people. And therefore, the understanding that the people in Israel had is that we are God's chosen people and we are going to be redeemed. They didn't even know how it was going to happen. Because before this, even as Sam was sharing, Sam was sharing, is they were offering sacrifices. Sacrifices for personal sin, sacrifices for families, and sacrifices for a nation. The Jewish nation, not the world. But now this revelation, this mystery, is that the gospel is not only for the Jewish people, but it's for all people of whom we are part of. I don't know even if we have one Jewish person here. So if the gospel was for the Jews, the rest of us are sitting here for nothing. But praise God for the mystery that was revealed to Paul and other apostles and prophets. God can speak through you as a gift of prophecy. But certain people have a grace on their life as a prophet or an apostle or an evangelist or a teacher or a pastor. We use these words sometimes incorrectly. I just want to say one thing. In the world today, generally speaking, in most countries, they call everyone who is ministering a pastor. Doesn't make them a pastor, it means it's more like a title rather than an actual grace. Because the different fivefold ministry have different aspects of their ministry. But they have been given to the church. So, in other words, God gives to the church interest. I just want to just clarify the church. There can be a misunderstanding of who the church What is the church? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church. See, See, the church, sometimes we say, I'm going to church and we're going to a building. We're going to a place where there's other people. In reality, the church is the people. I'll make that clear. Because this message is to the church. We read verse 10, I think it's verse 10. It talks about that it's revealed to the church. Okay? The church was not in the Old Testament. Okay? There was no church in the Old Testament. The temple, and it wasn't uh, the church. The church, we're living in the church age. Okay? So the day we're living in today is the church age. Okay? So therefore, God is ministering today on the earth through the church. And in the church and through the church. And the church is the church is made up of every Christian on the face of this earth. Every believer in Christ that has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord is a member of the church. Okay? That means not necessarily every person that comes to a church meeting is a part of the church. But only those who have accepted, and hopefully everyone has accepted. That's our prayer. Our prayer is that everybody is a part of the church. Because only the church is going to be raptured up into the heaven. Okay? Only those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. So I just want to clarify that. And this message is to all people on the face of the earth. So there's not one person on the face of this earth that can be excluded from being able to be part of the church. That's the mystery. That everyone, together, everybody, Jews, Gentiles, all nations, everyone who accepts Christ as Lord and Saviour is part of the church. That's the, that's the mystery. This mystery is that Through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Okay? 
For many of us, that's not a mystery anymore. But to many people before, it was a mystery. Okay? And that's why we've got to understand the audience that he's speaking to. These people, many of them, have just been converted into Christianity, and it has only been not long. So there are no Christians there that have been Christians for 20 or 30 years. They're all, since then, been converted. And being converted. So the gospel for us today is for every one of us. No one is excluded. You know, before it depended on, in the Old Testament, it depended on where you were born, what family you were in, whether, to, even to what you could do as part of uh, God's chosen people. In fact, if you wanted to be involved in, in, the, in the work of the sanctuary or in the tabernacle, you had to be a Levite. You had to be born into the right family, into the right country, and you had to have the right training. Today, it doesn't matter what country you were born in. It doesn't matter what level of education you've got. It doesn't matter. We're all accepted. Every nation. That's the mystery, and that's the good news. And, and Paul's ministry was to preach the good news to all people, the gospel to all people. See, the gospel is the message of Jesus Christ. The mystery. The mystery that can change our life and our eternal destiny. Destiny. It is for everyone who is in Christ. Okay, I'll just read those verses of scripture that tells us that it wasn't known before. In verse 5 it says, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it is now, being revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. Verse 5. In verse 9 it says, and, I make, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. Praise God. Paul was called, he was given power through the Holy Spirit to preach to the Gentiles. He said his power was made perfect in weakness. He said he wasn't a person of eloquent speech, although he had a good education. He, was not, he wasn't functioning out of his own power, but out, out of the power of the Holy Spirit. The promised Holy Spirit is for everyone. Freedom is for everyone. Salvation is for everyone. Peace is for everyone. God wants us to function in unity and love. It was, it was emphasised again in uh, verses 11 and 12 that relationship with God is available to everyone. We can come with confidence. It says, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In him, through faith, in him we may, have, we may approach God with freedom and with confidence. We can have a relationship with God. He can speak to us in a supernatural way. He can give us divine revelation <clears throat> verse 10 says he, the, his intent was, now, was that now through the church verse 10 the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authority in heavenly realms so this is not only made known to us 
but it's also been, known, been made known to the angels who are in heavenly realms. Now, often we look, talk about heavenly realms and we think of there's demonic powers, but there's evangelical powers. Hallelujah. And they are at, at many times at our disposal. Did you know that? But it is, what is now? Through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known. We have the same ministry as Paul had to share the gospel with the Gentiles or with anybody, the Jews as well. See, there is a fallacy that somehow Jesus Christ was, part, was plan B. It didn't work through the Old Testament, so now through the New Testament, God has plan B. That is not true. This has always been God's plan A to reach the world. He never, God never intended the gospel to be only for one nation. Although they are his chosen people, and at a time God again will reach out to Israel. So Israel are a unique nation. And I haven't got time to go into that. But we find in the book of Revelation that Israel is going to be reached. Even though at the time of Jesus, they rejected overall as a nation, they rejected Christ. Although some came to Christ. Okay, so part of the church at Ephesus will be some Jews and Gentiles together in unity worshipping God. So God's plan and purpose is for all of us to be able to worship him, to honour him and to be part of his church and the church functioning in the capacity of the Holy Spirit to reach the world. You know, sometimes we have it in our heads that somehow I can't do this what God is asking me to do because we're trying to think I've been able to do it with our natural capacity. See, Paul didn't operate out of his natural capacity. God doesn't want you to operate out of your own natural capacity, although he wants you to move into whatever he's got. You know, we can't save anybody. It's the work of the Holy Spirit through somebody. But God has chosen to use the church. And the church is called the body. It's called, it's called a, like a physical body which has many members, and many parts, which should all be functioning. We know that if our, if, our, if our body had a lot of its parts not functioning, we would not be able to do anything, we'd probably be dead. This is the mystery that Paul is talking about. The church functioning with different aspects, different qualities, different things. Some have got a certain grace to operate in a certain way. That's why we find some people have a capacity to reach lost people much more easier than somebody else has. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing him in the name of the Father and the Son and teaching him everything that I have taught you. And behold, I am with you forever. I'm with you always. So I want you to, there's two main things I would like us to uh, to take a hold of in this passage of scripture. One is that just as Paul was called for a particular function, for a particular grace, and you might say, well, <laughs> I could never. And that's probably right, you probably could never. But there is a certain function that you have that probably he didn't have capacity to do. Why did Jesus said, say to the disciples, you must wait? He told them to wait 
until the Holy Spirit came upon them before they went out to start uh, the church. And the church age, age functioned from the time that the Holy Spirit came upon the 12 disciples, apostles. You said it was only 11. Methodists took over the place of Judas, so they were 12. There was one failed, and another one took his place. And that's how the early church began, sharing in Jerusalem. But their ministry was in Jerusalem and Samaria and to all other parts of the world. You see, in their mind, that was all the lost tribes of Israel somewhere in the world to reach. Until it was revealed through the apostles and prophets that it was for everybody. Okay? That is the context of this passage of scripture and we can take it now because it's been for a long time now that the church is built from Jews and Gentiles. Praise God. The message needs to go out into all the world. Paul gave his life for this opportunity to share the gospel. He was in prison at the time or in, under house arrest at a prison in Rome at the time he wrote this. Okay? But he counted it a joy because he saw there were more people getting saved while he was in prison than when he was actually ministering around. How could that happen? What happened was that different people were visiting him and he was sharing the gospel with them. And while he was sharing the gospel, even those who were, who were bound to him, and like the, the uh, Roman soldiers and prison wardens were getting saved while he was sharing the gospel. And they were taking it to their families and therefore Roman military were getting saved. At the same time, there were different people coming to visit him and he was sharing and reaching out to them, particularly some of the people from Philippi and places like that, and, and some of them were in competition with one, one another to share the gospel. So there were more people going out sharing the gospel because of this, his situation than before. Did you know that? And that's why he didn't find it, he didn't believe it was such a bad thing to be under house arrest because the gospel was still getting out. He said some of these are going sharing the gospel with the wrong motive. But they were, you can read about it in Philippians. Some are doing with it, but he said, I don't care. The gospel's getting out. Many with good motives. It spurred people on. When they saw him in his condition, that made them think, man, I've got to get out there and do my bit. The message is, we should be getting, going out there and doing our bit. Hallelujah. Amen. If you saw yourself as a fully-fledged member of the body of Christ, the church, and saw yourself that there was a special grace upon your life to share the gospel, you should be sharing the gospel. Some people do it in, in word. Some people do it in the way they live. We all should be growing in Christ. I just want to emphasize that the church is made up of all individuals of which you are one. And the church should be functioning in its proper capacity. So even though Paul was in one place and he couldn't go out sharing the gospel like he did before, he had many visitors whom he released and equipped to do the work. So there were many more people going out sharing the gospel. Hallelujah. Paul ends, ends his message with this scripture. I ask you therefore... Do not be discouraged because of my suffering for you, which are your glory.
I'm here for you to release you. He said that I count it all joy to be suffering. The Apostle Peter says that there would be trials and tribulations. The grace of God has been on our nation in so much as that we haven't had to suffer a great deal of persecution. But if you wait, it'll come. It's starting to come a little bit now. Sometimes it's starting to cost to say you're a Christian. It's okay. God's grace will be upon us. God's grace. So we have two aspects of God's grace. One aspect of God's grace that he looks after us and things like that. The second part of God's grace is the grace he puts upon us to do, to function the capacity that he wants us to compare. And we have some people come and say, why, I, I, I feel I'm, I can't do. We need to do what we can do in our situation. But we need to rely upon the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's God's grace. That's my message for today. You don't have to compare yourself with Paul. He had a different grace to what you have. But there is a grace on your life to function. Not grace for, for salvation, because by grace you have been saved by faith. That is entering to be part of the church. There's a different grace on our life to be able to function in the capacity that God wants us to function. We, have in, we saw that in verse 12 that there's, we have a confidence in approaching God. We can have confidence. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to speak to you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to equip you. He wants to bless you. He wants you to be a blessing. That's God's plan for you. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you've given us a message. A message, Lord God, that we are part of you, part of what you want to do on the earth. Lord, you want to work through us. Lord, we saw even in the message before that you have prepared good works for us to do. We thank you, Lord God, that you want to use us as part of the extension of your kingdom upon the earth. And Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that we have a message that can set people free, that can grow your kingdom, that can save lives, Father, I pray your hand upon each person that's here right now. Amen. If you have a need this morning, if you want to have prayer this morning, we can pray for you and believe God for something that we can't do, that only God can do. Only God can save people. Only God can heal people. Only God can set people free. We can encourage somebody and we can pray believing that God's going to touch lives. God is a miracle working God. What is your expectation? You get what you expect. You don't necessarily get what you say. You get how much faith have you got to believe God is going to touch lives through, your, through you. When you pray for someone who is unwell, you can't make them well, but Jesus can make them well. Hallelujah. Because Jesus did everything. By the stripes, Jesus suffered. We've been made whole. Amen. Thank you. If you're here this morning and you want some encouragement or you want some prayer or you want us to stand together with you for something, we can pray with you this morning.
I just want to tell you something else that's going to happen in the future. The elders have made a decision that once we're going to start having an evening serving service once a month, probably the first Sunday of the month, and we're going to have that service set aside to believe God for healing, for deliverance, for evangelism. And if you have somebody that you want to have prayer for that doesn't come along to a church service, we're going to have a Sunday evening service where we have an expectancy that God's going to touch lives. He's going to set people free. We're going to see people healed. We're going to believe God for miracles. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless you.